write the number 63 as a product of primes. So what we want to do when we're working a problem like this is we need to pay attention to what the directions are asking us to do. They're asking us to write 63 as a product, and product is the math word for a multiplication problem. So we want to be thinking multiply when we see the word product. And then they tell us they want it as a product of primes. And remember that a prime number is a number that has only one and itself as factors. So only one and itself as factors. Remember that factors are numbers that go evenly into a number. Okay. So if I'm going to write 63 as a product of primes, I'm going to use a prime tree to help me organize my information. So I'm going to start with the number 63. And off of 63, I'm going to do two branches. And below those two branches, I'm going to show two numbers that when I multiply them, there's back to product, they're going to multiply to give me 63. So this is where my mental multiplication chart becomes really important. I want to be able to kind of go into my mental multiplication chart and say, oh yeah, 7 times 9 equals 63. And so think about these little branches, almost as kind of like an equal sign, a spread out equal sign. 7 times 9 equals 63. Now I want to look at the new numbers that I have. I have the number 7. And when I think about my mental multiplication chart and think about the number 7, 7 is a prime number. There's no numbers that go into 7 evenly besides just 1 and 7. And so that's that idea up here. Remember we said that a prime is a number that has only 1 and itself as factors. So that's the number 7. 7 is prime, so I'm going to circle prime, this prime number here. I'm going to circle all the primes as I go along. So 7 is circled. And now when I think of 9, I think, well, I certainly 1 and 9 go evenly into 9. But 9 also can break down as 3 times 3. So th 9 is not a prime number. So we're going to put branches off of the number 9, just like we did off of 63, because 9 will break down to another product of 3 times 3. And now when I take a look at these numbers, I can think, well, 3 could be 1 times 3, but that's the only thing it could be. That's the only way it would break down. And so that means that 3 is also a prime. So there's the 3. And that 3 must also be prime. If 3 is prime once, it has to be prime the next time I see it as well. So now all of my branches end in a prime number. So that means that I'm done with my prime tree. Again, we're calling this a prime tree. I'm not quite finished with the problem, though, yet, because this asks me, the problem asks me to write the number 63 as a product of primes. So I want to take my information out of here and I want to put it together into the final answer. So my final answer says 63 is a product of primes. So 63 equals, I'm going to write the prime numbers from smallest to largest just to help me organize the information. So I've got a 3 that's prime, and I've got another 3 that's prime, and I have a 7 that's prime. And all of those are being multiplied together, and so that tells me that I have a product if they're being multiplied together. Notice that the number 9 did not go into my final factors because it's not a prime number. The 3 times 3 is what happened to the 9, and so I don't want to put the 9 in there again. So here would be our final answer. We've written 63 as a product of primes. And we can always check our work by just going ahead and multiplying out. 3 times 3 we know is 9. 9 times 7 we know is 63. And because all these numbers in our product are primes, we know that we have the right answer.